Hey, what's up, guys? So, uh, new video. Thought I'd do something different for, for a change. Um, and go through five books that I've picked up at a uh, flea market. Now, for a bit of context, I used to work kind of a, as a freelance thing. I'd go down to um, Pretoria. Um, sort of once every year, from about the time that I was uh, about 15, 16, so around sort of 2010, 2011, um, I started working at a flea market that ha would ha come about sort of once a year around Christmas time. And, um, I mean, they had everything. They had, they had junk food, they had, um, flowers, they had pretty much everything. And one of my favorite tables, of course, was books. And I worked a couple of years with them. And it actually kind of became a running joke because I would, leave home with only a few books and I'd come back with several more so um, yeah alright so I've just picked up five I'm pretty sure I bought plenty more just move your big head out of the way silly dog but um, yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure I bought more than five books but, um, anyway, not quite sure which order, order I'm going to do these in, so I'm just going to go pretty much straight off the top of the pile and uh, work my way down. So, the first book is um, Okay, enough. Go on. Off the bed. Go away. Uh, it's one Bite with a Stranger by Christine Warren. Uh, this one, I believe, I believe I got this one at the 2012 market, I think. And this one was. Uh, actually gifted to me. This was one that my grandmother picked up. Um, at the time I was going through kind of a vampire fiction craze. So I was reading pretty much every piece of vampire literature I could get my hands on. And my grandmother got really into it as well. Um, and so she kind of just picked this one up, saw the title and went, oh, vampire book. <laughs> um, so this is the first novel of the others, according to the front cover here. Um, I have not read the other books in the series, uh, but this one is pretty, pretty good. Um, it's kind of your typical vampire romance. Um, the one thing I was not expecting was the uh, <clears throat> the sex scenes. Uh, that kind of came out of left field, but overall, I mean, the plot, the humor, all pretty good. Plot is pretty basic. This woman is essentially set up on a a blind date and ends up going home with a vampire, and uh, well, things just kind of take off from there. Um, so yeah, I've read this one a couple of times. It's Probably one of the easiest books that I've read in the vampire literature sphere. Um, but yeah, this is probably one book that I don't think they'll be adapting to film anytime soon. Then, the next one, and this one actually goes back to my very first market, um, and it's a book that I did a review on very recently Lady of the Forest. 
by Jennifer Roberson. Uh, basically, it's a Robin Hood story. I saw this. Um, at the 2010 or the 2011 market, whichever whichever was the first one that I worked at, um, there were a lot of books on the table, but most of them were books that um, that just didn't appeal to me. Um, a lot of it was for kids, for for like very young children. And somebody just decided to ride his dirt bike past my window. Isn't that lovely? Um, so yeah, there were tons of books on 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 the table, and I don't typically go for for books that have cover art like this. I mean, as nice as the cover art is, but it was this and. Uh, or a there were a couple of other books, you know, all with similar types of covers, and you know, it was basically this or some other paranormal romance type um, type of book. And I mean, I looked it up. I looked on on the back here. I saw um, essentially. Um, the that it was a, a Robin Hood story, and that was kind of enough for me. Um, so when I was, you know, on my breaks, I was reading. If I was working as a checkout assistant and there wasn't anything happening, I was reading. So yeah, this one was pretty good. I've I've read this one a couple of times as well. It's I don't want to say it's my favorite. It's probably one of the few historical fiction novels that I've read that I've really enjoyed revisiting and, and rereading. So, yeah. Loads of fun. If you haven't read it, check it out. Um, Alright, now this one... Uh, we've actually got a hardcover. Uh, the Ghouls. Now this is an interesting book because it's essentially a collection of short stories. There are, it says on, on the front cover, 18 classic stories that inspired great horror films. And if you look at the, what's that? Huh. What do you know? I've still got the in I still have the uh, the invoice for for it. <laughs> um, but we've got um, the Devil in, in a Convent, the Lunatics, Puritan Passions, Phantom of the Opera is in here, Dracula's Daughters in here, uh, the Body Snatcher. Um, now, of all of these, the only ones that I recognize are. Dracula's Daughter and Phantom of the Opera. Um, and I picked this one up at the 2015 market. Um, and I think it was actually... I can't remember if I bought this and one other book. Um, No, it was just this one. So I bought this one kind of on a whim. I mean, I I just seen a, a history like a like a documentary type thing on what was it, Lon Chaney? One of the of the two Lon Chaneys. Um, and I mean that's that's him on the front cover in um, I believe Phantom of the Opera. Um, Apparently, he liked to do all of his own makeup. Um, but what. So that kind of caught my attention. And then I saw on the bottom it says here Introduction by Vincent Price and an afterword by Christopher Lee. And, uh. Well, I mean. 
those are two of my like th those are two horror icons that I that I'm a huge fan of. And I'm just a huge fan of, of horror movies in general, so it was kind of a find. And I mean I paid twenty bucks for this. This book was twenty bucks. Somebody just decided, well, pff, I don't want this thing anymore. So they put a twenty <laughs> a price tag of twenty bucks on it and threw it in a in a box to be sold. And uh I happened to, to find it and buy it. So, yeah, good times. <laughs> um, now, this is where things are kind of... The fourth book, and this is where things are kind of, kind of weird. Uh, this one, I can't remember when I bought this. I think I bought this at the... 2016 market because that was the last one that I did. Um, it is Carte Blanche by Jeffrey Diva, and this is a James Bond novel. Now, I'm a huge fan of Bond in general. I said that when I did my um, Bond on Bond review. Roger Moore's like behind the scenes book on his experiences with the James Bond franchise. Um, so I, I said it in that video and I'll say it again. I'm a huge fan of James Bond, have been for many years. Um, I haven't read all of Ian Fleming's books, I've read most of them. I read Casino Royale, Live and Let Die, You Only Live Twice, you know, Man with a Golden Gun. I'm pretty sure I've read um, a couple of others as well, View to a Kill and um, For Your Eyes Only, because um, those were the ones that our that our local library had, and um, well, some of them anyway. Um, but yeah, I've been a fan of Bond for years, and I never got around to reading anything outside of Fleming's work. There was never really um, an author. I mean, after I finished the Fleming novels that our local library had, um, I found books continuing the Bond franchise, or the, the Bond novels, um, by a man named, I believe John Gardner was his name, and he did a whole range of 007 novels. I read those and I couldn't get into them. Um, maybe I must try again, you know. Maybe I must. Maybe I must try again. But I saw this again. The same thing. I went through the um, the book section of the market, and this one was actually standing upright. Basically, I picked this one up kind of at random. I wasn't even really paying attention to anything. Um, I saw carte blanche. I didn't even see it was a James Bond novel until I kind of looked at the back. Um, but the reason this is kind of odd for me is that I bought this, I believe, at the 2016 market, and I haven't read it yet. <laughs> I haven't actually gotten around to reading this one yet, so... Um, yeah. Something for me to read at some point. Hopefully within the next, maybe within the next month or so, right? So that's, sorry, one, two, three, four books. I've kind of lost track of things here. Whoops. Sorry, kitty cat. There's a kitty cat sleeping next to the, next to the laptop here, so. Alright, now this one is also going way back to my first market uh, it's a big anthology or, or compendium as you guys can see here it's a nice thick book uh, and it is vampires encounters with the undead and this one was um, I can't remember if there, I don't know if there's like a specific author it was edited 
and commentate it says on the thing here um, edited and with commentary by David Scal David J Scal now I'm not sure who that is I've seen him in a couple of vampire related documentaries I haven't read anything else that he's written on the subject if he's written anything but this is just a big book you know it's got you know um, there are tons and tons of short stories that's basically what this is it's a collection of short stories and um, stuff like that so you've got um, John Polidori's The Vampire, you've got um, Alexis Tolstoy, The Family of the, of the Vaudelac, uh, J. Sheridan Lafanu's um, Carmilla, uh, Good Lady Duquesne by El Mary Elizabeth Baden, Dracula's Guest is Bram Stoker, of course. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you've got, there are tons of short stories, there's a, a bit of... Um, like non-fiction stuff in here as well, little side facts about um, the different, um, like the the different changes in vampire media as as time went on, and um, it doesn't mention like the like super modern side of things. I think it kind of stops at the in the late 90s, unless I'm mistaken. Really? Why do people always have to choose late at night to drive their cars and rev their engine like that? It really irritates me. Yeah, this was kind of funny because I got to my very first market. And this is back when I started my whole vampire craze. My grandmother basically handed me this book and said, well, you know, there you go. Have something to read. <laughs> so, yeah. Loads of fun. And, I mean, it's got a, a ton of just interesting um, facts. There's a, a timeline, like a, a tapestry of vampire fiction. Which is basically, you know, um, uh, different stories um, that have been dated. So you've got, like, um, Arthur Conan Doyle did a story called The Parasite in 1895. No, wait. 1894, sorry. The Kiss of Judas, same year. Uh, Dracula um, in 1897, of course. Um, where does this timeline end? Let me just see about that. 82, 84, 88, 90, uh, 93, 94, 95. So it looks like the, the Tapestry of Vampire Fiction that they grant here is, oh no, here, here it is, it continues, 96, 97, 2000, 2001, and that's where it ends. So, yeah, you get a pretty good, solid, um, Understanding and there's quite a bit of mythology here. It's very interesting to see how um, the vampire mythology changes from place to place, from story to story. Um, I've actually read this cover to cover. At l I must have read this cover to cover at least five or six times. So, yeah, pretty good. Um, like I said at the start of the video, I've probably bought many, many more. Um, maybe I must do like a bookshelf tour or something like that. 
what do you guys think? Um, would you be interested in that, in seeing the books that I have on my shelves? Hmm? Oh, and yet, and yet again, we're at another tangent. Ah, the joys of, of unscripted videos, right? All right, so those were five books from, that I picked up at a flea market. I have been to other flea markets. I have seen other books, other flea markets that st that sell books, but the books never really interested me in these other flea markets. You know, it's typically um, books that are in other languages that I have no idea how to speak, or you know, these crazy romances or things like that. And I'm not really. I mean, I'm not against the romance genre. I think it's an okay genre if you can, if the story is done well. But, uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of it is just corny, um, corny type stuff. It's not really my, my type of reading. So that there, there's been tons of books at several flea markets that I've gone to. None of them have really sparked my interest. Uh, there was one that's held locally. Um, I don't know if it's still going. They used to do it kind of every uh, every Saturday or every Sunday or every other weekend or something like that. So maybe I must check them out if they're still going. Um, yeah. So, um, I will probably be doing some videos on these five books, you know, with the exception of Lady of the Forest, of course. Um, I've already done the review on that, so that video is up. Mm. Um, yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you've read any of these books, um, what did you think of them? Which ones have you read? What did you think of them? Did you like them? Did you not like them? Why or why not? And, uh, you know, I think I'm going to do, I, I will do a bookshelf tour type video as well, I think. Just as something interesting, something different, because I actually do need to clear my bookshelf. Um, it needs it needs a bit of repair work done to it, so uh, <laughs> that's going to be fun to do. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next one. Bye.